Um, okay, so anybody following along, um, Firefox worked and Chrome did not. So there we go. Um, okay, so yeah, um, basically I am here to talk to you guys about the new logo and I'm gonna be looking down because I have two screens and um, I actually normally have three screens and this little USB converter HDMI thing basically blew a transformer yesterday, which is awesome. That's all right. So um, yes, I am not gonna rehash sort of like the new logo and why and all that stuff. There is actually a council presentation that I gave a while back that's on YouTube. If you just search for Fedora council logo, it pops right up. And I already go into all the history of that stuff. So I was meaning for this talk to be more about an update on what we talked about during that council presentation and sort of where we're going with the new logo, what is some of the ongoing work, and then how you can help with sort of the new logo rollout effort. Um, so yes, and spot the new logo isn't about Tom Calloway. Um, this is that repo. It's actually about spot, like spotting things, finding them, which I believe is the origin of, of Tom's nickname because he's very easy to spot because he's a tall fellow. Um, but yeah, so I guess the first thing is I want to talk through, oh, when did the logo change? Um, we started rolling out the logo. Well, actually here, I'll just start with first things first. This is our logo transition timeline. Um, we followed it pretty well. Um, I wouldn't say we've been exactly in lockstep with it, but this was sort of the basic plan. Um, we don't intend to destroy existing materials. If you want to hold on to them, please do. Um, we do intend to produce on an ongoing basis Fedora Classic swag. So one ticket I wanted to show you guys is um, the Fedora Classic logo work that we've been working on. And I don't know why Pagura is not loading images, but that's OK. Um, let's see if I can force the issue here. So these are some mock-ups of the Fedora Classic logo. Um, do, should we have a poll? Uh, oh, for the Classic, that might be a good idea. I don't know if anybody has a preference here. Um, I think that was just a inspo thing. So we were thinking about something like um, large soft drink company classic style um, hand lettering with like the swirls and kind of including the logo on that. Um, another approach could be something more like a classic car where it's sort of more geometrical maybe and kind of 1940s style. Um, we could also just have a variety of classic logos too. Um, I don't know if I can actually start a poll. I guess I can. Okay, so question. What approach to Fedora classic logos do you prefer? And the option would be um, soft drink classic. See how careful I'm being? Um, car um, classic, car classic. Both, neither. Okay, there you go. You got a poll. Great idea, Maria. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, the classic logo ticket is 7.59. I can drop that in the chat. Also, like, I mean, if anybody, I don't like presenting by myself. If anybody wants to jump on the video, please feel free. I could also use help just moderating and like doing stuff. I'm sorry, this is a little, a bit of a scattered mess. And that ticket here is 7.59. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat. So you have that, that's the classic one. So that's sort of a work in progress. And I mean, we kind of basically want to keep the old logo alive because people definitely really like it. And it might be nice. You know, we were thinking about, for example, we could start a new Fedora badge. It's like an old timers badge. So once you've been around the Fedora project for like a certain number of years or something like that, then you could apply to get the old timers badge and it's the Fedora classic logo or something like that. So kind of a neat idea, I think. Um, okay, so then other stuff we have here. Um, Fedora Classic Design. So that, so yeah, so this is something we wanted to do immediately and we underestimated the amount of time it would take to create a Fedora Classic design. So that is sort of something, the swag for the Fedora Classic logo is basically something we'll probably 
launch once the logo is ready. Um, we do have a new Fedora diversity sticker sheet with the new logo. At least we have the design. I don't know if it's sent to print yet. Maybe it'll be in the secret classified, you know, Fedora swag kit for Flock. Um, as needed. So from from actually F34, like a little bit before F34's release, actually, as new requests come into the Fedora design team, we design materials with the new logo by default now. So if you have a new request for the Fedora design team, that's what you should expect. We're not designing any new materials using the old logo. Um, from F34 beta, we started packaging it in the distro itself. There should not be any spots in the distro where by default you see the old logo. We did maintain the classic logo in, not the classic logo, but the old logo. We did maintain that in the packages in case anybody wanted to swap it out or they were depending on it for something else. Um, you know, it might be nice to pop it out as a separate package maybe, but we didn't, we wanted to minimize change and minimize risk for breaking anything. So, um, okay. And then we started rollout with Fedora 34, the social media properties. So, um, ask Fedora has a new logo. Start Fedora is actually being redesigned. It has a new logo right now. Um, but there's actually a really nice community process with a relatively new Fedora design contributor doing the UI design. We're looking at having an intern work on the implementation of that new design. So, you know, look forward to this page looking a lot more slick. Um, Get Fedora does have the new logo. We have an upcoming sort of Fedora website, complete overhaul, rethink. And, um, you know, the new logo will obviously par be part of that. Um, I'm thinking that's more of a long-term process. If you see me in sessions asking a lot of questions about like strategy and competitive analysis and stuff like that, that is where I am coming from and asking those questions and trying to formulate what is the plan for our next version of the website. Um, and then Fedora Magazine already has the new logo. Um, with Ben's help, we actually have the new logo on the community blog already, even though that wasn't slated until next release. Um, so, and you can kind of see like the emphasis, why Fedora Community's blog was sort of later in the schedule than Fedora Magazine is Fedora Magazine is ge geared more towards everyone, including users, whereas the community blog is geared more towards contributors. So um, we sort of felt like let's let's make the front door fancy before we we make the inside fancy if that makes sense so that was just where the prioritization went there um for f35 we're looking at some of these sub sites just updating the logos spins labs community blogs done we're looking at updating the discussion that fedora project.org right now and that discussion that fedora project.org is probably going to involve the creation of a new custom icon um for ask that fedora um, ah, hold on. For Astat Fedora, we have a custom icon for it. Um, and we're sort of like, you know, as, as we start rolling things out, we're kind of doing it organically and trying to figure out how much customization can we allow versus having consistency across logos. But one of the important things for these web platforms that I think is good to have a custom logo is that you have the fave icon on the tab. So you know where you are in the tab. Um, one of the most frustrating things about working in Fedora, like classically, is when the fave icons are all completely just Fedora logos, then you can't tell, oh, well, where's my Bodhi tab versus where's my Koji tab or stuff like that. So we're trying to fix that issue. Um, yeah, so that's basically like the overall plan we started with. Um, yeah, and the long term is to try, and we, we've already started actually to try to hit the contributor facing apps, parts of the infrastructure, um, coming up with a format for those. So, um, and then another thing, so this is sort of along the lines of enabling customization, but also keeping consistency and doing things in a way that's reproducible across different sub teams in the community. Um, the Fedora Mexican community was one of the first communities to ask us, hey, you know, we'd like a logo for our community. And this was sort of past the point where we started doing stuff with the new logo. So we started thinking about um, what are ways, and this is somewhat frustrating that Pigor is not loading images, but we were trying to think about what are ways that we can enable these local communities to provide a little bit of the flavor of their local area within their logo, but without having it be so custom that it's a long drawn out pr process. We want these to kind of be very 
quick and easy to, to churn out so that we can support everyone. Um, we also want consistency from community to community, but at the same time, we do want you to be able to have a unique look and feel. So um, one of the ideas that me and Maria had on this one was sort of inspired by the Duolingo penguin, or he's not even a penguin, he's an owl, but I just, I prefer penguins. Um, and he's like this little green owl guy. Um, maybe I can load him up. But, he, you know, he's basically a, a mascot for the Duolingo app. And there's different um, language communities on Duolingo. And I, for whatever reason, well, you could see him in the fave tab, but hold on. Duolingo owl. Um, let's just say France. Yeah, so you could see, like, the different language communities sort of dress up Duo, the Duolingo owl, to sort of reflect um, their country's culture or traditions. So we thought it might be nice to do something where maybe instead of like the owl, we have the fedora panda and maybe we dress him up according to different traditions from that local community. So for fedora Mexico, um, Maria was exploring, could we do like a sugar skull panda? And that could kind of reflect that community. And that could be sort of a mascot that is used alongside maybe a standardized logo with fedora and location name. So, um, that's something that we're looking at exploring. And we're kind of, again, like, I don't, I don't want like, it's, I think it's silly to come up with like a strict list of things must be this way. And then that's that. And we only do it that way without being flexible and working with individual communities and figuring out what might work best for them. And then, so the way we're approaching it is like, we're working with Fedora Mexico on this one. Um, the Polish community reached out to me, the Italian community reached out to me. So for communities who sort of have the bandwidth and interest to have sort of that level of uh, high touch exchange with the Fedora design team, we're looking to them to help us develop those guidelines that then could be applied to the broader uh, full catalog of local communities. I got to jump on for this part. So I actually, I was looking through some more tickets for the current uh, design intern to work on. And I reached out to Masha and I said, hey, can uh, Daria start like making some drafts here? So if you have some more background stuff, uh, I'd love to connect you both on that. Um, I think she was just going to go ahead with the Mexico and just like a standard template and also she herself is from india so she was going to create a fedora india one as well just as a beginner to see and so we can kind of talk about those drafts i'd like to see them here in like a week or two so we can look forward to some okay. updates there okay great yeah and I, one thing i want to point out on that is that we do have um i have an intern lauren who this summer has been working on revamping the fedora mascots so we have beefy miracle we have panda we have badger um, there's some minor characters. And um, I think if, you know, for example, for the Sugar Skull Panda, um, it would be really great if if Daria could use the new panda design that Lauren created um, so that we have, like, moving forward, we sort of have this new standardization. Um, and again, Pagora is not loading images, but you know what? That's cool because we have a, a community blog post that I can point you at. Hopefully it's not too far back. So are those are those finalized now? Yes, they are. Um, they they right now they're in bitmap format because um, the tool that Lauren is using uses vectors in a way that it doesn't let you export them, which is somewhat frustrating. Um, but you know, I I think it's I think honestly, like as character design sheets as is, they're, they're still quite useful. We may have to rebuild them in Inkscape though, unfortunately. But you know, it, it is what it is. But yeah, um, we're considering these basically the final designs for these characters. Um, this minor character sheet, there's an update to that one that wasn't ready in time for this blog post, but this blog post is a good place to take a look. But yeah, I think moving forward, these are the designs we should use. So when, say, we do the Sugar Skull Panda, it should be based on this panda, if that makes sense, instead of like the old panda. And, you know, again, if anybody's like asking, well, why are you revamping these guys? I mean... The artwork styles are different. The panda especially has a lot of inconsistencies. Um, we've drawn the panda in all sorts of different ways. And we kind of just wanted them to appear like they're from the same family and they kind of the artwork style matches too. And this is also sort of a more contemporary style, you know, like Beefy Miracle, you know, the existing Beefy Miracle is from the late 1990s or early 2000s. So, I mean, you know, 
styles and trends change over time. So it was just, it seemed like a nice thing in, in coordination with the new logo design to sort of clean up our mascot artwork too. So, and I will post this in the chat because I'm sure folks are interested. And just note, I'm not closely monitoring the chat. Um, if you really want my attention, uh, message Marie, and I'm sure she'll raise it to me. Um, and like, we have five minutes anyway, but um, yeah, so there's that. Um, we've had a few things with, let me look. All oh, right, well, there's the spot, the old logo um, queue. And this is kind of a good way how you can help just even, you don't have to be a designer. You don't even have to be technical. If you're kind of browsing around Fedora's websites or apps or even inside Fedora itself, um, and you encounter a spot where the old logo is still present, if you wouldn't mind filing a ticket here, and I will um, paste that in too, that would be super helpful because we're basically using this as a queue to go through and just start updating them. So for some of these, you could see we have PRs pending. Um, I close them once the PR is accepted. Um, if you wanted to see the process of taking an existing logo and sort of new new Fedora logoifying it, the Mindshare ticket is a pretty good example of how we, we've done that, so. Hey Mo, we have about four or five questions all right. Uh, I don't know how much you have left in your Prezzo, though. I'm not trying to rush you. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's basically it. So, you know, okay, an apology cool. for the technical issues. Um, where did the panda come from? What is the history of the panda? Okay, I can tell you that because I'm the origin of the panda. I really like pandas. It's just a thing. I can't tell you why. I just, I did a project on pandas in fourth grade, and I just really like them. They seem to be very chill, laid back, non-drama animals. And I felt like chill, laid back, no drama is like a great personality trait to work in open source. So um, I just started anytime the opportunity came to throw an Easter egg into something or, you know, I used to call, I, I don't anymore because I don't know why, but I used to call the members of the design team pandas. So like when I would start an email to the mailing list, I'd be like, hey, pandas or something like that. Um, it's just a cute, friendly animal. They're cuddly, they're large, they're, they're huggable. I, I just like them. Um, is there a Fedora Massachusetts community for my state in the US? So I'm assuming your state is Massachusetts. I think it is because we talked about that earlier. Um, there is Northeast Linux, Linux Fest, but with coronavirus, I, I don't know how things are, but I would consider the Northeast Linux Fest community to be sort of the kind of New England regional local community. Um, and it's not Fedora specific, but that's a good place. Um, could we get a 3D Fedora logo swag item or a 3D file to print your own logo or both? So you're looking to 3D print the new logo um, and you would like a 3D, like, okay, so a 3D Fedora logo swag item. I guess I need more details on like what kind of swag you're interested in because like that it's 3D, that's cool. But what what is the use? Like, would it be like a keychain maybe or something like that? Like if I like to think about things in terms of how it's going to operate in the real, real world and what its function is going to be and how's it going to help people. So if you can kind of make that case to me, we can absolutely explore that. Um, I, I think that's a cool idea if we could do something 3D. Um, in terms of a 3D file, um, I can certainly generate one if you have something in mind. Um, again, it kind of depends on what you're looking to do with it. Um, does Fedora India have a new logo yet? No, that is something that Daria is going to be working on. Um, how can my SIG Fedora idea get new artwork with the logo? Oh, well, that's an easy one. Just file it and spot the old logo. You can just say like, here is update Fedora Mindshare. You could do the same, like update my SIG's logo, put the name of the SIG, give us any existing artwork that you have. If you have any preferences on what you would like you know, if you have an idea that oh, we'd really like to incorporate this or that or whatever, let us know and we'll work with you. Um, the Fedora magazine has the new logo in a darker blue. Is that something we plan to do generally, use a variety of colors, or is that an exception? Yes. So that one is a very cool question. So Fedora magazine has always had a brand that has its Fedora-like, but it's a little bit distant from it as well. Um, and I think there's a lot of different reasons for this. Um, I think a lot of this was Ryan Lurch's idea, but he kind of wanted it 
he wanted it to be accessible to users and not feel like you have to be a contributor to follow along. So to give it sort of its own brand that's still in the family, you know what I mean? Like between say Bodhi and Koji, like they should look like brothers or sisters. Whereas like Fedora Magazine and Fedora Project Org are maybe more first or second cousins, right? So using the darker blue on the logo was a way of providing a little bit of that distance. And I think that coloring the Fedora logo, the new logo in different colors, and you might notice too, we added like a gradient to it as well, so that the tail of the Fedora, the Fedora F kind of goes into the background a little bit. There's a little bit of a 3D effect there. Um, it really depends on what the goal is. I think by default, we'll use the standard blue. If it's a se separate treatment that requires it, we can use white or black too. Because this is a one color possible logo, we can do that. We can be more flexible about colors, but I don't want to get too wild. Um, I really want to stick to the dark blue and the light blue unless there's a really good reason. But like, unless it's a very specific use case that has been discussed and has a good reason, like Fedora Magazine, um, probably folks should not be doing the Fedora logo in different colors. I think if you're doing the logo in different colors, again, there needs to be a reason. You know, for example, like if we wanted to do some pride swag. So we wanted to do something where it was like a t-shirt that had the Fedora logo across the chest and the Fedora logo is in the Fedora palette of all the different colors to sort of look like a rainbow. That could be a totally okay case, but it's something that I wouldn't just do on your own. I wouldn't do that in a self-service capacity. I would definitely engage with the Fedora design team and sort of have a discussion so that we can make sure it's done the right way. Cause like, for example, like you might think, oh, well, I wanna do something like that. So I'll just use the colors of the rainbow. Whereas if you talk to somebody on the design team, we'd probably be like, that's a great concept, but why don't we stick to the palette colors of the Fedora palette? It's still a rainbow. It's not the classic red, green, blue, yellow, whatever, but it'll give you the same effect and also be closer to our branding. So there's that. Um, let's see if there's new questions. Will the Fedora ever add the logo next to the activities button like RHEL used to do? Um, maybe. That's probably a good question for the workstation group if they want to do that. Um, it doesn't matter to me either way. So um, does Fedora recommend a default monospaced font? We have default serif, sans serif, and title font already. Um, I mean, we can if you want. Um, I'm assuming by default monospaced font, you mean for like branding and marketing materials because for the distro and OS itself, that's really like workstation group determines that stuff. Um, and, and honestly, like the default, I think right now the default GNOME font is Cantorel, whereas Fedora's default font is Open Sans and Mozart. Um, I think I hit them all. Did I miss anything? And I think we're at time. So I guess that's that. So after this, at I think 11.30 to 12.30, we're gonna do a live Fedora kind of video chat. Normally when the Fedora design team meets, we have video chats and we kind of just go through our ticket triage and stuff like that. So we're basically gonna do that here at Nest. So you can feel welcome to join us there. And if you have more questions or things you wanna talk about, or if you wanna get started contributing, that's a great place to start. So thanks everybody. <laughs>